Hello. Now we are going to continue on with our working coordinate geometry and today we are looking at the beginning of the equation of the line. And again we have page 18 in our log tables open. Now we already know these two formula so there isn't technically any new formula today but we're just going to be reminding ourselves of it. So we know that the equation of a line is given by y is equal to mx plus c. m is the slope of the line and C is where we cross the y-axis. It's called the y-intercept. Extremely useful way of looking at the formula because we can read off the slope and the y-intercept without any work. So we'll often use that in the middle of problems to help us find the slope and the y-intercept. Uh, the other version of the formula that uh, we will use if we are looking for the equation of a line and we don't have a picture to figure it out from uh, and we can't draw a sketch very easily uh, is y minus y1 is equal to m on x minus x1. From that formula, you see the two things that you need for finding the equation of the line algebraically. That is the slope of the line and a point on the line. Now, usually, we'll find two points on the line, use them to find the slope, and then take one of our points on our slope and use them in that formula. Let's put this into practice now. I have a situation here where I have find the equation of the line Q where Q where K is an element of Q and L is perpendicular to Q in general form. So find the equation of the line in general form given these restrictions. So this is a bit of set notation which we might not have seen in a while. K is an element of Q that means K is on the line Q. So we have a point on the line and we know that L is perpendicular to Q and we're given L in the question. So if we know the equation of the line L, we can use that as to find the slope of Q. So we have information enough to find uh, the point and the slope, therefore the equation of the line Q. And in general form, we're going to come back to at the end, it just means we bring everything over to the left hand side uh, and have everything equal to zero. But we'll come back to that in a minute. So let's have a look at our equation of our line L. Oh, sorry, we want to find the equation of the line Q. Let's start this way. We're doing an exam question. I know I want to find the equation of the line, so I'm going to write down the equation of the line formula. So I'm going to write down y minus y1 is equal to m on x minus x1. I write down that formula. I let that formula guide what I'm going to do next. Well, I want a point on the line. So for a point, I've got k. So all I have to do is go over to my picture in this case and read off my coordinates. In the door 2, up the stairs 4, k is at 2, 4. The point is solved. Now I need to uh, find the slope that I'm looking for. So I've got a slope of my line that I'm looking for. I don't have it. So I'm looking for or the slope of q. So mq. I don't know it, but I do know information about L. I know that uh, the slope of L is perpendicular to the slope of Q. Therefore, let's find the slope of L. So if I take my line L, I've got 3x minus 3y minus 21 is equal to 0. Now I said for the uh, general form of the equation of the line, everything is over on the left hand side equal to zero. This is what it looks like when we have the equation of a line in general form. So I have x and y and any of my numbers over on the left hand side equals to zero. This is called general form. And it is quite often asked for on the exam papers. Now, I want to know the slope of this line. It's in general form can't read the slope very easily uh, in general form, or at least it can be confusing to do so. What makes it very easy to read the slope of the line is if I have it in the form y equals mx plus c. So let's do a bit of basic rearranging and uh, get our equation of L in the form y equals mx plus c. Uh, so I'm going to rearrange my formula. Uh, and there's a few different ways that you may have been taught to do this. I can see I have a common factor of 3 everywhere. So I'm going to divide everything by 3. Divide everything on both sides by my common factor of 3. And I get x minus y minus 7 is equal to 0. Now I want to rearrange this formula. 
uh, and when I do I will end up with y is equal to uh, x y is equal to x minus 7. That's the equation of L in the form y equals mx plus c. So what have I got? y equals y equals mx plus c. What's the slope of this line? Well the slope of L by reading off here is just going to be 1 over 1 and c is going to be minus 7. We don't happen to need c right now but it's important to know that that's what we can do. We can get that information immediately from our picture. Again, that's a perfectly valid method that we must know. So if I I'm looking for the slope of my line L, I can simply read it off the graph. And if that's a possibility, I can just do it. Uh, so I can read here that if I go across by 1, if I go across by 1, I go up by 1. So that means that my slope is 1 over 1, so I have a slope of 1. I'm going to take this opportunity to point something out to you. If I go across by 2, I go up by 2. Straightforward enough. There's a link that's going to be very important at certain parts of the course that is opportunistic to point out now, and that is the following. The slope can be defined relative to the angle of the line between uh, the line and the positive x-axis, the angle I have scribbled in here, so this angle here. What's the connection between the slope of my line and that angle? It's the tan. So if I have tan of alpha, alpha is my angle, is equal to opposite over adjacent. Opposite over adjacent, right angle triangles now. Uh, 2 over 2 or 1 over 1, we'll say. Do we know what angle that is? If we have tan of an angle is 1 over 1, it means alpha is going to be 45 degrees. This is going to be a very important idea later on in the course. I'm highlighting it to you now. So oh, the slope of our line is also oh, the tangent of the angle, the tan of the angle uh, between the line and the positive x-axis. Now, with that caveat out of the way, we have the information we were looking for. We now know ML. We know that ML is 1 over 1. Therefore, MQ is going to be uh, perpendicular to that. MQ is going to be perpendicular to ML. So I'm going to have uh, ML multiplied by MQ must equal minus 1. Very important formula. We're going to need it uh, later on in more complicated line questions. So ML is 1 over 1. MQ minus 1, therefore MQ equals minus 1. I now have the two pieces of information I need. I've got K, a point on the line, and I've got at my slope. So K, I'm going to rewrite the information so I don't make a mistake. And MQ uh, is equal to minus 1 or minus 1 over 1 if you prefer. I have my formula, and I'm going to sub in. And I write here x1, y1. Everything very clearly laid out. y minus uh, y1 is equal to m on x minus x1. Uh, and we rearrange this. y minus 4 is equal to... If this was a fraction here, multiply everything on both sides by the lowest common denominator, as usual, to get rid of fractions and equations. Minus x plus 2. Rearranging this into general form, which is what we're asked for, will give us x plus y minus 6 is equal to 0, depending on the way that you rearrange your formula. So that is what I was finally asked for. I was asked for the equation of my line q 
And again, in the exam, I'm marking that I know exactly what I was asked for. I have the equation of line Q is this business here. Uh, and I can uh, and I can see that I have that in general form. Everything is over on the left uh, is equal to zero. That's my general form. If I was asked a follow-on question that would be quite lightly, what's the intersection of my two lines K and L? Or they might not say it as, sorry, Q and L, I should say. What's the a point of intersection of my two lines Q and L? Or they uh, might give you a picture and ask you about it. Uh, what we can do is simultaneous equations. So I'm going to rearrange these into the form where I have x plus y is equal to 6 for my equation 1 and my equation for L I could rearrange to x minus y is equal to 7. I'll call that equation 2. And I can see that I already have plus y minus y here, so I'm going to just add these two equations together. And I'm going to end up with 2x is equal to 6 plus 7 is 13. Divide both sides by 2. We end up with x is equal to 13 all over 2. Now I want to find my y coordinate, so I sub back into one of my equations. x plus y is equal to 6. And I now know that x is equal to 13 all over 2. So I have 13 all over 2 plus y is equal to 6. Rearranging, I get y is equal to minus a half. So the coordinates of my point of intersection would be 13 all over 2 and minus a half. So that is just an extension to the question. This is what I was asked for. You can see how it is we apply our formula and critically lay out what we're doing very clearly. So if I can get myself to the point where I see equation of the line and I'm going to write down that formula and then ask myself what do I know? What do I need to know? That'll get me moving in the question and once we're moving we'll be able to keep going. But if we don't write down the equation of the line when we see a question on equation of the line it's very easy for us to just freeze and not make progress. So these first few lines are some of the most important skills to learn for getting ourselves ready for the final exam. To be able to write down what we've been given and write down any relevant formula gives us an anchor to dive into the question more effectively.